Hi, I'm Ivan Zood. Welcome into another video in the ongoing series here at Jatai Academy, J-A-T-A-I dot net on the web. Thanks for tuning in and watching. We strive to, through myself and a whole team of fabulous educators, provide you with great content to help you build and grow your business. And I was asked today to provide a haircutting tip or technique. And rather than an individual specific technique, and I don't really share haircuts per se, I share technical concepts, I thought I would talk today a little bit about what we call cutting hygiene. And I get the term cutting hygiene from one of my earliest trainers and coaches in the business who referred to cutting hygiene as working clean. He used the word hygiene because I think that usually refers to creating a healthful environment free of dirt and disease, things like that. I don't know what the official definition is, but I like the way that sounds. And when he talked about cutting hygiene, many times he talked about things like very neat and clean partings and sectionings. But he also talked about scissor use. So I want to talk about switchblade shears from Jatai, from Feather, Feather switchblades. And I want to talk about a couple of techniques related to the use of switchblades scissors in general, but switchblades in specific, that I think can be helpful to you in your hair cutting. Now, I'm holding a feather switchblade five and a half, and I also have a feather switchblade six and a half. And it's funny that it came up to filming this video today because literally two days ago, I changed the blades on the scissors. It was time for new blades. The old ones were consumed, ready for the new ones. And had I known I was going to shoot this today, I would have waited and saved them for today, but I already changed the blades. But I still want to take you through blade changing. The scissors are stainless steel with beautifully finished handles and really nice smooth operations. One of the things I like about them is they do not feature a rubber silencer and you can listen there's a bit of a click and because of the way I cut hair fairly efficiently meaning quickly that clicking noise is something you hear during a haircut and I think it's got a really great sensory value for the client and for myself I like that clicking sound so the precision nature of the way these are manufactured they don't require the silencer and they line up and they cut beautifully but the beauty of switchblades is, well, switching the blade. And what you do is this. You will grasp, open the scissors slightly, and there's an area on the blade that has some knurling or notching for grip. Using a towel, you want to be careful. You don't want to cut yourself. You want to hurt yourself. These guys are crazy sharp. And even when the blades are spent from hair cutting, they're still crazy sharp. Grasp the blade with a towel and simply pull the blade off. The blades will be dropped into the sharps bin on your styling station for safe and healthy disposal. You'll turn it around and you'll grab the other blade. Grasp it tightly with a good firm grip on the scissors and the blade, the sharp edge is facing away from me, simply pop off the blade. The blades snap in because there is a little spring on the surface of the blade and there's a little hole or a detent in the blade tang on either side. This is what blades look like. They come in uh, peg cards like this, uh, protected to maintain the integrity of the edge. Five, five and a half, six, 60, 65, six, six and a half. Now you'll say, wait a minute, how can the blades be two different lengths? And the answer is the difference in length between the five and the five and a half comes up not in additional blade length, but through some extra length in the handle. So the six and a half frame is a little bit longer. I'm gonna insert these blades back onto the scissors because this is my six and a half and these blades are not spent yet. But notice I slide it on and I'm holding away from the very sharp edge and snapping it in. And there you go, blades installed on my scissors. So um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna look at a couple of tips for cutting hygiene. A couple things I wanna talk about. Number one, I wanna talk about stabilizing your scissors as opposed to cutting in outer space. Many times we will see hair cutters that have a little less control cutting like this. They'll elevate a section of hair and they'll hold it up and they'll cut here, nipping at the hair. Well, that's a great way for your line not to be so even. It's also a great way to take a small piece out of your fingers. 
Ouch! And with switch blades, you always have sharp shears. You're not waiting for the sharpener. You're not cutting with dull. And quite frankly, one of the things I love about switch blades is dull scissors are dangerous. You don't want to be using dull scissors. So, we stabilize. We set the tip of our scissors on our index finger, literally resting in contact. I'm pulling my other fingers down so you can see it. And we walk along closing. Now notice, when I set this on here, I'm going to look at you. I'm looking at the camera. I'm not even looking at my finger because when I'm stabilized against my finger, I cannot cut myself. And I know that I'm cutting a very controlled, precise line. So what that's going to look like in real practice is this. Set it on, walk it across. Look how clean and sharp that line was. Set it on. And you hear the clicking, you hear the snapping, that's that stainless steel precision frame of my switchblade. So the first element of cutting hygiene is the stabilizing of our scissors relative to our fingers for very clean lines. The next thing we're going to talk about always comes up in the cutting hygiene conversation. You know what I'm going to say, don't you? I'm going to say, don't cut past the second knuckle. Don't cut past the second knuckle. When you get to right there, stop. And everybody thinks it's because you'll cut yourself, and it's not. Once again, it becomes an element of control. Because past your second knuckle, the hair here that is not held under tension buckles slightly. It scoots down a little, and therefore the line is going to be uneven. The line's actually going to climb. Because the hair's going to scoot. It's going to be a little longer when you recomb it. So if you cut past the second knuckle, it's not over your concern for cutting yourself, but it's over your concern beyond this point for a lack of consistency of line and evenness and following the guide, and that's cutting hygiene. That's what that's all about. I think switchblade shears are a great shear for somebody entering into the beauty industry because they minimize your investment. They're a great shear for volume hair cutters because simply for about $11, the cost of a package of replacement blades, you've got brand new scissors. I started out in the business over 30 years ago, and my first employer told me to go out and buy a pair of feather switchblade shears and a five and a half. I am holding in my hand, 32 years later, that pair of feather switchblade shears. As good as they ever were, it's a few blades ago, I gotta tell you that. I've been throwing away blades and putting new blades on for a long time. They're metal, they're recyclable, they're good for the environment, and I love my feather switchblades. You're going to love them too. J-A-T-A-I dot net on the web is where you go for Jatai Academy, all our great deals on a monthly basis, and all of our support and help. And if I can help you, of course, it's clipperguy.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.